Welcome to Popcorn Planet. I'm Andy Signor, and Gina Carano is finally speaking up about how Disney let her know that she was fired from Star Wars The Mandalorian. Turns out they didn't. She found out via social media just like the rest of us. And it gets worse. Apparently, they didn't really give her any other warnings, except for one attempt to help draft an apology uh, when the pronoun thing happened. We're going to go through all of her comments. First, I got to thank Drunk 3PO for his report, because that alerted me to this fantastic piece by Barry Weiss. Barry Weiss is writer, editor, and author of how to fight anti-Semitism. Uh, she wrote for the New York Times, among very uh, a lot of other pieces. She wrote this amazing op-ed piece about Aziz Ansari when all that was going down. Aziz Ansari is guilty of not being a mind reader. A f- another fantastic article if you haven't read it. She was brought in to help uh, the New York Times be opposing viewpoints. When Trump was elected, uh, they wanted other people, centrists, conservatives, etc. And so she was there to sort of offer different views. And I think she was bringing some fantastic views to the Times. Uh, but then this past year, uh, she she uh, resigned. Uh, in a letter post online, she said a bullying by colleagues and an illiberal environment. Uh, she did a whole thread about how there was a civil war brewing during Black Lives Matter, about how the mostly young wokes uh, versus the 40 plus liberals, uh, same one raging inside most public uh, publications of the old guard uh, principles, broadly calling civil libertarianism. Uh, they assume they shared the worldview of the young people they had hired who called themselves liberals, but they were wrong. The new guard has a different worldview, one articulated best by John Haight. Uh, they call it safetyism. And yes, here they are. Greg and John's fantastic book, uh, giving this a book, a plug. If you like this sort of reports, please look into this and how the, uh, as they say here, how good intentions and bad ideas are setting up a generation for failure, the coddling of the American mind. I've plugged this book a bunch, uh, but clearly she's a fan as well. It's a great one. Go check it out. Uh, but as she goes in this thread further, uh, they talk about safetyism, uh, in which the right of people to feel emotionally and psychologically safe trumps Uh, what were previously considered core liberal values like free speech. Uh, Her thread goes on, and I implore you to check out her on Twitter, check out her website. I'm going to put a link to her full article in here because I apologize in advance. I am going to be reading a lot from the article because I think it's really fantastic. If you'd rather now check out and read her article directly, the link is in the description. So don't say I didn't warn you. Andy, why are you just reading an article? I gave you a heads up. Uh, But I really want to read this because I think her take on this is fantastic. And I want to share uh, her take because a lot of you have been coming at me. Andy, why are you why are you defending Gina? I'm so sick of this. Why is there yet another report on Gina? Well, she ends this article so beautifully, summing up not only her feelings on Gina. Again, Barry is a writer of How to Stop Anti-Semitism. She really wanted to ask like, and figure out, should I? what's going on here? Is Gina a terrible person? Should I not be supporting her? Uh, at the very end of the article, she really shares something that I think is so important here. The bottom line here is that intent matters. It doesn't just matter a little bit. Our entire culture, our entire justice system hinges on it. There's a difference between saying something false and lying. There's a difference between hurling the N-word and quoting Huckleberry Finn. There's a difference between murder and manslaughter, writes her former colleague Brett Stevens in a column that the New York Times publisher spiked. They wouldn't post this, uh, but it ended up writing in the New York Post. Why? Why, why can't we say this? Cancel culture necessarily erases intent. It relies on taking someone's worst moment out of, out of context, on elevating a moment of ignorance, on exaggerating a misstep, and using that error to destroy someone's life. Woo, it's so this is so spot on. Bravo, Barry. We live in a time when almost everything is posted, recorded, and shared. That's the reality. It's not changing. The forgiveness a neighbor used to give to a kid who said something stupid at a bar now has to be granted to him by everyone with a phone. Yes, I agree it's terrible, but we can't unplug the internet. Living in this world is going to require a deep and generous ethic of forgiveness that isn't possible without insisting that intent matters. Did Gina Carano intend to share an anti-Semitic image? I don't think so. So that's the important takeaway. And I want you to to go back if you're curious, read her whole piece. I'm going to get to Gina's quotes in a second, but read her whole piece. She breaks it all down. She breaks down her worries. She breaks down what Gina did say and what she didn't agree with. Uh, But at the end of the day, you know, she admits, what did Gina Carano do? Her sin is is her politics. She's a conservative. Uh, She had a parlor account. Uh, All these things that she talks about uh, to break down what it is. Now, I want to echo again, because I've said this myself. A good rule of thumb is to avoid comparing America to 1930s Germany, your political opponents to Nazis and yourself uh, and your allies to Jews. What Carano wrote, or likely repeated and shared, is what she did, uh, was wrong because Holocaust is a singular evil. Facts. Uh, But... 
if bad Nazi analogies were reasons for Hollywood terminations, uh, as Rabbi Suave points out in the Smart Piece of Reason magazine, a lot more people would have to be fired, including Carano's ex-star, Pedro Pascal, who tweeted this. Uh, this wasn't even America in 2018. This was from Palestine, Palestine, uh, Palestinian image. Um, this wasn't even the worst thing he posted compared all Trump supporters to Nazi Germany, uh, to the Confederates. Uh, it's offensive. I got family members who voted Trump. They're not racist. I'm so sick of that overgeneralization. Sure, some are, but not all of them are. So wh why does the comparison matter when it's, you know, either way, one shouldn't be canceled. It depends what their intent is behind posting it. Did they mean to be malicious? Did they mean to be hateful? Was it an accident? Was there something else they were trying to say with the image that a lot of people are taking offense to that they didn't actually mean? Those are the questions that I think are incredibly important to uh, ask. Uh, and even Ben Shapiro, uh, who came in, um, uh, offered a lot of his, his own uh, thoughts uh, because he's the one who took it. Uh, I, sorry, I thought I had his quote here. Um, uh, he does. He says here, there was a, sorry, before I get to Ben Shapiro's, I'm sorry, it threw me for a second because there was a second thing that people dug out after she sort of saw Barry, here's the author, wrote and said, I support Gina and Ben doing this because she says here, build original, interesting, and generative things right now. The, this minute, every day I hear from those with means, with children at a private school who are being brainwashed, people who run companies where they are scared of their own employees, people who donate to their alma mater, even though it betrays their principles. Enough. You have the ability to build new things. If you don't have the financial capital, you have the social and political capital or the ability to sweat. Uh, so she's value. She's like, look, good for you guys, Ben and Gina. You're teaming up to create something new, to make a new platform for yourself. Bravo. They're absolutely allowed, and some people won't like it, but that's how you keep going. You build it because the mainstream won't let you. Well, then find an audience to pay for you directly, and we'll see if they do. Uh, but as Barry points out, she then, you know, after she sort of was like, this is what it is, 25 hours later, she saw that Gina had tweeted this. And now this is also being used as another example of Gina's anti-Semitism. Now, I don't know. Why is this? Why? What is, what is Jewish about this? What is anti-Semitic about this? I don't know. The meme apparently is based off of an East London mural, mural called Freedom for Humanity. Um, the faces in the original one were more hook nose and obviously derogatory stereotype of Jewish faces. Um, and this was deemed anti-Semitic. So uh, here I want to, the, the background, the image doesn't matter. There was images, you know, there was these two images are different is what really matters. And this is the one that was deemed offensive. But this was the one that Gina shared, just so you guys are up to date. And so she wondered, like uh, Barry, the author, was wondering, should I, was I wrong to have leapt to Carano's to support? Something, I'll be honest, the mob has made me curious. Like, wait, am I, am I missing something here? And no, Barry Weiss, the author of uh, how, <laughs> just to remind you, how to fight anti-Semitism author, Barry Weiss, is here to, to, to give her two cents. Uh, and she wanted to make sure she also wasn't jumping to the wrong conclusions. Was the meme proof of a darker worldview of Karanos? So she went out directly to Gina to get the answers. And she asked, what was her intention when she shared the image? Did she know that it drew on anti-Semitic ideas and imagery? And Gina, here's Gina's finally, it got to her words. I was in utter shock and confusion when certain people said it was anti-Semitic, Gina told her. Then, as I went to take it down, I noticed that the image was not the same as the one people were referencing. I was honestly confused. Should I take it down or leave it up? I still don't know the answer to that question because taking it down only makes the mob attack you more. It's true. It's an admission of guilt if you take the picture down. Uh, and so that means you did something wrong. Keeping it up, oh, well, she still believes the things that the people refuse to accept she didn't mean. It's a lose-lose battle for someone like Gina in this situation. Uh, the image for me was a statement that people need to stand together and rise up, stop being so manipulated by the powers that believe they know what's best for you, and play games with our lives, she wrote. My heart has only ever had ultimate respect and love for the Jewish community. And I'll, I'll be honest, that's what this looks like too. Oh, a lot of rich white people in charge. Uh, we have to stand up against Amazon, Walmart, Elon Musk. They're the ones who are leading the world uh, and others. That's what it felt like to me. I didn't see anything else, so I can see why maybe that was definitely an accident. Um, and Barry agreed. To her, it it, she realized it looked more of like the protocols of elders of Zion. When old men, money, and a globe, and a secret meeting are in one picture, my mind screams Jews. But it seems that to a lot of people, it genuinely does not. Because the people, there are no explic explicitly, explicitly Jewish symbols. Um, 
And here's Ben Shapiro, who's relevant here because, as he said, he's the most, he was the most targeted anti-Semitic hate was directed at him during the 2016 election. Uh, he says, I know what anti-Semitism looks like, being one of the most prominent kippah-wearing people out there. He wears the yarmulke. Uh, and uh, he says, this doesn't chart. I don't like the meme, especially given its origins, but anti-Semitism, like racism, and contrary to the New York Times executive editor's dictum, requires intent. Gina obviously didn't have any such intent. Gina is an anti-Semitic, period. This meme is being resurfaced as a post-facto justification for an unjustifiable cancellation. Gina wasn't aware of the origins of the original picture and was devastated to hear about it, just as she has been devastated by the absurd and bad faith contention that she is an anti-Semitic, that she is anti-Semitic in any way. Um, and so here's where we are. And so she uh, admits that uh, she found out when Lucas, uh, she's, she has this trouble of admitting guilt when she feels like she did nothing wrong. Um, because she does, she's like, well, I'm not guilty of that. That's not what my intent was. So I don't want to apologize for something that I didn't actually do. Uh, and so she found out that trouble when Lucasfilm tried to force her to apologize over the pronoun joke in her Twitter bio. So this was the only time it seems Star Wars did say, well, look, you have to apologize for that. <clears throat> we have to, you have to do something. And so, uh, she said early on last year before the Mandalorian came out, they wanted me to use their exact wording for an apology over pronoun usage. I declined and offered a statement in my own words. I made clear I wanted nothing to do with mocking the transgender community, and I was just drawing attention to the abuse of the mob and forcing people to put pronouns in their bio. So this is telling to me first because she's acknowledging to Disney that she was bullied, and they're not having it. They're like, well, no, in this situation, you just have to apologize. Now, look, trying to step back and really be broad and fair about all this. I can see how some people without the context of everything assumed her intent was malicious and that she was being anti trans Okay. I can see that. But the reality is if you could dig deeper and you see what she's saying, she was referring to the bullies. And I think that's important that we distinguish and some just can't, some refuse to, but I don't understand why those same people can't also see it's really bad for anybody to force you to put your pronouns in. What if you're not comfortable or ready to do that? What if Gina wanted to be known as something else? And these people are like, tell us, tell us, put it in there, put it in there. How is that okay? Why, why is that okay too? Why aren't we allowed to call that out? Why is she not allowed to stand up against that? She's very clearly stood up for the trans community and said she's not against it. I don't know what else she needs to say, but that coupled with everything else has just you know, added up into this thing. So was she warned? Was she told to, to apologize? Was she told to fire? Apparently, uh, Lucasfilm's response to her sort of not giving their exact apology out was to exclude her from all the press and promotion for the show. Uh, that was heartbreaking, but I didn't want to take away from the hard work of everyone who worked on the project. So I said, okay. That was the last time I was contacted about any type of public statement or apology from Lucasfilm. I found out through social media, like everyone else, that I had been fired. Gina got fired. Meanwhile, uh, all these other people are doing terribly anti-Semitic things, according to Barry, uh, that I know. it. Whoa, John Cusack. I had no idea. But this quote here is very telling. That was the last time I was contacted. Back in August, I think it was, when she, they told her to give the apology. It's now almost March. And she wasn't contacted by Lucasfilm since then. Not about any type of public statement or apology. And clearly before that, she didn't wasn't told to give an apology. So all of this talk of she's been warned, she was warned, she was warned. Looks like she wasn't. She did an apology. They didn't fire her after she said the apology. They said, well, look, you're not going to do press. Look, I guess it's safe to assume they then clearly were going to be keeping her their eye on her after that. But I don't know. I expected a little bit more drama behind the scenes of like, an internal struggle between her and others. Maybe there were others, but Lucasfilm specifically, she's making it clear. I was, I was not contacted with any, making any other public statements or apologies uh, from Lucasfilm up until then, man, I don't like that. She found out through social media that she had been fired like everybody else. That's, that's just so, I love, I mean, I, look, I think that's wrong. How does HR allowed to do that? It happened to me too. They didn't reach out to tell me. I found out via press release too. My company, in fact, told me we were going to meet the next day, like the next work day. And I, that's why I was quiet and didn't do anything. And then literally did it the night before late in the evening, to sort of beat any other press releases or statements that I might be making to try and make it look worse. Uh, it wasn't a good, that didn't help them. I'll tell you that. Uh, but that, uh, that's just so sketchy that Disney's is in that level too. Why not speak to her? Now this is Lucas. And I, I was contacted 
That was the last time I was contacted about any type of statement or apology from Lucasfilm. Now, that doesn't mean Favreau or Pascal or anybody else may have reached out or warned her or talked to her in the... In the but that, you'd think that would be Lucasfilm, right? What do you think about this? This quote's telling. Uh, and and to me, it's it's not great to hear. You, you, you would hope that someone there would have given her the heads up and that she wouldn't have found out through social media. Who knew? What did they know? Uh, I've been having my own sources that Favreau did... I'm told Favreau did know, and that was the last straw with that specific thing. Uh, what's really happening there? I hope we get some truth and some facts about what happened just so we can all know. And will Disney ever address the double standard? Beyond what you want to say about what Gina and Pedro Pascal says, guys, why are you mad at me? Be mad at Disney. They literally supported detainment camps for Mulan. Like, what the hell? That's actual things going on that you're mad at Gina about. And that one's like, oh, yeah, whatever, Disney. Yeah, yeah, Disney. It's so ridiculous. I refuse to just be like, yes, hail Disney. Look, I like Disney. I'm going to still watch Disney. I, mean, I can't cancel it. I, I, it's too much on my career and my channel here, sadly. But at the same, I don't, I don't want to cancel things. At the same time, like Disney, you got to address this double standard better. This isn't cool. And everybody out there, wake up. It's, there's so much more happening. And that's why this, this report is important. You could totally disagree with Gina politically. I get it. You can not like what she said. So unfollow her. Mute her. Block her. Just separate the person from the show. We're going to have to start learning that. As Barry said, intent matters. And everything is online right now. Uh, I implore you, go read Barry's in full uh, piece. It's wonderful. Uh, gives you a lot more insight. Uh, but intent matters. It doesn't just matter a little bit. Our entire culture, our entire justice system, it hinges on it. There's a difference between saying something false and lying. There's a difference between all of these things, and it's true. We have to be uh, more careful. And now with everything is posted everywhere, everyone is going to be under the spotlight at one time or another. So be nice to your neighbors, your fellow human beings. May come back. The karma will always get you. So kindness matters. I'm trying to do it better in my life. I hope you guys are too. If you like this sort of take and other stuff like it, please hit that subscribe button and make sure to check out all these other videos here on Popcorn Planet.